So goodness of fit, that is a theoretical frequency distribution, whether there is a significant difference between observed frequency distribution and a given theoretical frequency distribution, whether two given populations under study are homogeneously similar in their composition or not, we use Kolmogorov's Minroff's test, is what you have to remember. Now, what is regression analysis? One of the options given to you is regression. Right? Regression study, correlation study. Iske baare mein do teen pantiya hum baat karke aage badenge. So, what is regression analysis? There is one dependent variable, independent variable. We want to know whether there is any relationship between these two variables or not. Iske liye hum karte hain regression analysis. This is used for forecasting. This is used for forecasting. Uh, typically, for example, you want to know rash driving, number of road accident by a driver. You want to compare the two, then best test will be regression. So why do we do regression analysis? Three reasons it will help. It will provide an estimate of the values of the dependent variables you can be able to calculate a dependable, dependent variable. That means how many accidents are going to happen from the values of the independent variable. The rash driving time. How many rash driving drivers are there? Independent variable say, dependent variable ko agar calculate karna hai, then you use regression analysis. It can be extended to two or more variables. There may be a rash driver, rash drunken driver, rash psychotic drivers, rash depressed drivers. So multiple, not only rash driving, being depressed, being alcoholic, being fatigued, did extra night duties, multiple variables you want to study, then that is called multiple regression. But ultimately what is the ultimate goal? You are trying to calculate the outcome, that is a dependent variable from the values of the independent variables, etiological factors. That is the regression analysis. So, bhaiya, correlation or regression ke beech mein kya farak ho hai? Correlation bhi relationship pad hai. Regression bhi relationship ko dekh hai. To kya difference ho hai? In correlation analysis, the degree and direction of relation are studied. The degree of relation, correlation coefficient can be calculated. It will tell, is it a strong love, mild love, light love, just love, no love, hatred. So the degree, degree, and also the direction. If the romance is going towards love or towards hatred, correlation can calculate. So correlation coefficient has a value between minus one to one. And uh, with the help of correlation coefficient and standard deviation of two random variables, you can calculate the regression coefficient. Regression may, it is the nature of the relationship study, not the degree. Kitana strong, you can't do it with regression analysis. If the value of a variable is known, that is independent variable, the value of the other variable, that is the dependent variable can be estimated. And the regression coefficient is greater than 1. That is the difference between correlation and regression. So, if you take skin cancer mortality versus the state latitude, kitne height mein, that particular uh, geographical location is located. If you take correlation, correlation, you can calculate whether it is strong, if so, how much strong by calculating the correlation coefficient. Whereas, if you calculated simple linear regression, simple linear regression, then you are looking for the uh, you are you are you you are uh, trying to calculate for a given latitude how much mortality that is the outcome for the given independent variable that is the latitude, how much is the 
dependent variable that is a mortality outcome you are able to predict that is the simple linear regression that is the difference between regression and correlation right now If a 95% confidence interval for a prevalence of cancer in smokers aged more than 65 years, the 95% confidence interval is 56% to 76%. Now examiner is asking a beautiful question. What is the chance of the prevalence that it could be less than 56%? Confidence interval is falling between 56 to 76 percent what is the chance of the prevalence that it could be less than 56 percent beautiful question so you all know 68 95 99.7 rule what is that if it is a standard normal distribution curve 68 percent values fall within one standard deviation 95 percent fall within two standard deviations 99.7% fall in three standard deviations. Aap sabko malum hai. Parabar. Now, 95% confidence interval is saying that the cancer in the smokers is falling between 56 to 76%. 95% confidence interval. That is given in the question. Right? So 95% is uh, how many standard deviations, doctor? Two standard deviations. Two standard deviations. So there are outliers away from two standard deviations. There are outliers. Total 100%. Hai. Usme 95 hai, 5%. Out of that 2.5% is this outlier. 2.5% is that outlier away from two standard deviations. So, typically you have 95% falling between 56 and 76%. Less than 56% will be 2.5%. More than 76% will be 2.5%. So, there is a 2.5% probability that the prevalence will be more than 76% is what you have to control. Right. Now, if confidence limit is increased, then what is the effect if the confidence limit is increased? If you increase the confidence limit, is ke pehle jo significant data dikhe hai, abhi insignificant ho jayega. Insignificant ho jayega. For example, if you say, by, I am saying you, out of 300 MCQs in our grand test, if you get 100 score, I am giving you a confidence that the probability of your getting seat is definitely you are going to get the seat. So, you have a mock test. You have 110, 120 correct score, 300 way. आप सब खुश हैं और वाह हमको आने वाला है सीट क्योंकि मुरली मारे बोल दिया 
But I said suddenly, sorry, my computer is telling something different. You should get at least 210 out of 300 for me to confidently say that if your score is 210 correct out of 300, then you will get seat. Then all the people who were earlier statistically significantly uh, thinking that uh, humko seat milega, suddenly kya ho gaya? Insignificant ho gaya. That is, if confidence limit is increased, previously significant data become insignificant. Now, one word about confidence interval. Typically, the width of the confidence interval is given by 2z into standard deviation divided by square root of the number of population in the sample. So, the width of the confidence, confidence interval, confidence interval, typically increases if the confidence level increases, sample size decreases, or population standard deviation increases. Standard deviation is in the numerator now. Number of population sample size is in denominator now. If denominator decreases or numerator increases or confidence level, Z value increase, then the width will increase. 